We would like to welcome our dearest viewers via Nursat and Telelumir TV. And we begin with the following headlines. Pope Francis expresses his closeness to all those suffering from the war in Gaza. His Majesty the King, the injustice faced by the Palestinians is evidence of the international community's failure to resolve their issue. Church leaders in Jerusalem call for abandoning unnecessary festivities during this year's Christmas. Jordanians women launch a solidarity message with Palestinian women. Welcome all. Pope Francis expressed his closeness to all those suffering from the wars among the Palestinians and Israelis. After reciting the Angelus Prayer, His Holiness said that he embraces them in this dark moment, prays a lot for them, and added that enough is enough for the weapons to stop. Weapons never lead to peace. They only widen the conflict. Pope Francis continued, stating that in Gaza, efforts should be made to assist the wounded, protect civilians, and immediately deliver more humanitarian aid to the exhausted residents. He called for the release of hostages, including many elderly and children. The Pope emphasized that every human being, whether Christian, Muslim, Jewish, or from any other religion or ethnicity, is sacred and valuable in the eyes of God. Everyone has the right to live in peace. He urged not to lose hope and to continue praying and working tirelessly so that the sense of humanity overcomes the hardness of hearts. On another note, the Vatican announced the itinerary of the visit of the Pope to Dubai, which is set to take place from the 1st to the 3rd of next December. His Holiness will participate in the World Conference of Religious Leaders hosted by the United Arab Emirates. The conference will include the participation of His Eminence Sheikh Al-Azhar Dr. Ahmad Al-Tayyib and numerous heads of states of representatives of religions worldwide. The program also states that Pope Francis will, on the following day after his arriving to Dubai, proceed to the Expo City to inaugurate the Pavilion of Religions. In the speech delivered at the recent Arabic Islamic summit held in Riyadh, His Majesty King Abdullah II stated, We gather at this summit for the sake of Gaza and its people who are facing killing and destruction in a brutal war that must stop immediately. Otherwise, our religion may descend into a major clash with the innocent paying the price on both sides and its precautions reaching the entire world. His Majesty emphasized in his speech that Israel aims to turn Gaza into an uninhabitable place, targeting mosques, churches, hospitals, rescue teams, children and the elderly. He added, we say to every believer in peace and human dignity, regardless of the religion, that the values of Islam, Christianity, Judaism, and our common human values do not accept the brutal killing of civilians witnessed the world in recent weeks. We cannot accept our legitimate and just cause turning into a focal point that ignites conflict between religions. King Abdullah II, in the presence of His Royal Highness Crown Prince Hussein bin Abdullah II, stressed that Jordan will continue to fulfill its duty by sending humanitarian aid to the Palestinian brothers through all possible means. He concluded his speech by stating that silence is not an option in the face of the catastrophic conditions in the Gaza Strip, where life is being suffocated and access to medical treatment is prevented. Humanitarian corridors must remain sustainable and secure, and the world must condemn the war crimes of denying food, medicine, water, and electricity to the people of Gaza. Furthermore, the Riyadh summit condemned Israeli attacks on Islamic and Christian holy sites in Jerusalem, as well as Israelis' legitimate measures that violate the freedom of worship. The summit, in its concluding statement, emphasized the necessity of respecting the existing legal and historical status of the holy sites. It underscored that the Jordanian administration of the Waqf in Jerusalem is the executive legitimate authority with the jurisdiction to manage and maintain Al-Aqsa Mosque and regulate access to it within the framework of the historical Hashemite guardianship over Islamic and Christian holy sites in Jerusalem. The summit also expressed support for the efforts of the Jerusalem Committee in confronting the practices of the occupying authorities in the holy city. In the midst of the ongoing war in Gaza, the patriarchs and heads of churches in Jerusalem have called on all citizens to abandon any non-essential festive activities during this year's Christmas. The patriarchs encourage priests and believers to focus more on the spiritual meaning of Christmas in their pastoral activities and religious rituals during this period. They emphasize directing all through towards their brethren affected by this war and its consequences, offering heartfelt prayers for a just and lasting peace in our sacred land. The patriarchs and church leaders urge believers to pray, support, and generously contribute to aid the victims of the war who are in desperate need. They clarify that this measure is taken in the face of the painful and sorrow times we are currently experiencing due to the war in Gaza. Last week, the Council of Church Leaders in Jordan issued a statement announcing the cancellation of all festivities, activities, and manifestations of this year's Christmas. 
This decision is a gesture of respect for the innocent victims and the pure blood of our martyrs in Gaza and all of Palestine. The celebration of Christmas will be limited to prayer and church rituals. The Council decided to unify behind the righteous stance represented by the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, led by His Majesty King Abdullah II. They appreciate all the diligent efforts made by Jordan to silence the violence of war. In the Holy Land, Father Isa Muslih, the spokesperson for the Orthodox Patriarchate, stated that the dire and sorrowful circumstances faced by the people of Palestine, especially in the Gaza Strip, compelled the patriarchs and church leaders to make decisions to limit the Christmas celebrations to religious rituals. They are committed to the spiritual aspects of the holiday and prayer for the salvation of the people from the horrors of war and the pain of losing loved ones. The leaders also expressed support for the families in Gaza by providing various forms of assistance. Father Isa emphasized that there will be no Christmas tree lighting or any festive celebrations in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and other cities and villages in the Holy Land. Despite the bombing, all churches and institutions affiliated with the Patriarchate will remain open to welcome the people of Gaza, especially the families forced to evacuate or leave their destroyed homes. He called for solidarity and unity in these challenging moments that the Holy Land is going through. Christians in Palestine have appealed to Christians worldwide to stand with them in calling for immediate cessation of the war in Gaza. In a statement they expressed, we cannot remain silent in the face of these atrocities. It is a crucial moment that requires action, not indifference. This is not the time to turn a blind eye to suffering, as history will record our words and actions. The statement continued, stating that it is time for courageous faith against the forces of weapon, destruction and death. They, alongside millions around the world, call for a comprehensive ceasefire followed by humanitarian support for those in need and the return of all displaced individuals. They emphasize the need for a final solution to the conflict that upholds the fundamental principles of human rights, the right of return and self-determination. The signatories stress that they cannot remain silent as the situation in Gaza puts their Christian and humanitarian values at stake. They asserted that failure to stop the war would result in more death and the destruction of God's creation. A patriarchal delegation from Antinoch arriving from Syria to Jordan handed over a financial contribution to His Eminence Archbishop Christophorus, the Orthodox Archbishop of Jordan, in support of their brethren in Gaza. This donation is a contribution from His Beatitude Patriarch John Yaziri, the Patriarch of Antinoch and all of the East, for the Orthodox Syrians and the entire Orthodox flock in the Patriarchate of Antinoch. The delegation consisting of Metropolitan Athanasius Fahd of Latakia and Metropolitan Ephraim Ma'lul of Aleppo emphasized the unity among brothers. They carried a message of brotherly love from the Church of Jerusalem and the restoration of ecclesiastical communion between the Patriarchate of Antinoch and all of the East for the Orthodox Syrians and the Patriarchate of the Holy Orthodox Church of Jerusalem. The Hashemite Charity Organization announced that under the Royal Directives, five aircrafts from the Royal Jordanian Air Forces have been dispatched carrying medical aid to the Jordanian Field Hospital in Gaza. The organization stated that this assistance aims to enhance and develop the capabilities of hospital and increase the capacity of the medical staff. The aid package includes urgent food and humanitarian supplies to support the people in the region. This step is a part of the ongoing efforts of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan to stand by our people in the face of the ongoing war in the sector. The Scout and Guide Group of the Latin North in Zarqa renewed its scouting pledge during an annual celebration marking the group's establishment. The event, held under the theme We Grow Through Scouting, included the Divine Liturgy presided over by His Excellency Bishop Jamal Khadr, the Patriarchal Vicar for the Latins in Jordan. The celebration also featured the participation of the parish priest Father Iyad Badr, Assistant Priest Father Cruz, the spiritual guide of the group and Shadiaq Hazem Haddad. Several nuns, as well as the general commissioner of the group, Rakan Fakhouri, and leaders and members from various regions of Jordan were also in attendance. During the liturgy, Bishop Khadr emphasized the importance of the Scouts movement's message, being rooted in faith in God, actively engaged with the church and the parish, and dedicated to the nation and society. In the current circumstances of wars and political military instability in the Holy Land, the bishops and priests of the Latin Patriarchate in Jordan gathered for a spiritual retreat. The retreat spanned five days and took place at the Visitation House belonging to the Rosary Sisters in Dabuq. The meeting held under the theme Encounters with the Lord Jesus in the Gospels included prayers and reflections on the event of the hour, particularly the conflicts and wars in Gaza and the Holy Land. The participants prayed for the Lord to hear their prayers and to strengthen the Palestinian people in their land, in the name of Jesus Christ and through the intercession of our Virgin Mary, who is highly revered. 
A celebratory mass was held on the occasion of the consecration and renewal of allegiance at the Marshar Bel Maronite Church in Amman. The mass was presided over by Father Joseph Swaid, the pastor of the church, with the assistance of Deacon Sinan Salame and the participation of the church choir, and it was attended by members of the parish. The Archbishop of Canterbury in the United Kingdom, Justin Welbley, stated that the Israeli occupation's shelling of hospitals and civilians in Gaza Strip is intolerable and a violation of international humanitarian law. He called for an immediate cessation of the war. Welby emphasized that the situation facing employees and patients in Gaza hospitals is catastrophic and everything must be done to restore the healthcare system and protect those in urgent need. With support from Jordanian women to the women of the occupied territories in Gaza, a solidarity message was launched at the Royal Cultural Center in Amman. The event was organized by the Jordanian National Committee for Women's Affairs in collaboration with the National Center of Human Rights. The activity included several dialogue sessions discussing the current situation in Gaza and the necessary solutions to stop the Israeli aggression on the region. Various ministers, dignitaries, members of parliament, and official and party figures attended one of the sessions. A short film was also presented highlighting international law and the suffering of Palestinian women and children due to the Israeli aggression on Gaza and the West Bank cities. In Bethlehem, the children of the city of the Nativity raised a cry of pain, hope, support, and solidarity for the people of Gaza. The gathering took place in the courtyard of the Church of the Nativity with the presence of clergy, institutions, schools, and thousands of students. It was a stand for the education and teaching community, including private and government schools, directors, teachers, and nuns. During the gathering, children held banners for the children of the Gaza Strip and a message of peace for peace, security, and safety for them and their families. They chanted loudly, we want life, we want freedom, we want to live, and in unison, they prayed. O Lord of Peace, grant our country peace. We have reached the end of our broadcast, dear viewers. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis expresses his closeness to all those suffering from the war in Gaza. His Majesty the King, the injustice faced by the Palestinians is evidence of the international community's failure to resolve their issue. Church leaders in Jerusalem call for abandoning unnecessary festivities during this year's Christmas. For more information, please visit our website, nursatjo.org. Wishing you a pleasant time, and may you be blessed with all the happiness. Have a good day.